Greetings, uh, Pax Oz Online, Pax Oz Line. You know how it is. You know how it is. Pax we're all trying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pax Auslinia. Now, yeah, obviously, we're all trying to uh, make the best uh, of a of a novel scenario, and pursuant to that, uh, it is my great pleasure to join you, as I have for years, uh, with my good friend Chris Straub. Now. Uh, it should be let, let us establish very firmly here at the beginning that we miss your land very, very much. Uh, I am on record as saying repeatedly that Australia is the only place on earth that I know how to relax. I think it's because it's because it's thousands of miles away. I, I if, think it's the Coriolis effect. You, right? you, th you, you think it's you think that it's inverting the anxiety somehow yeah you know you and here you coil but there yes it's it's the inverse but i also think that it's just like if something were to happen there's there's nothing i can fucking do about it i can't i can't do it i can't handle That's it all the, the only <laughs> thing that i can do uh when i am there is play the occasional game of blackjack mm -hmm go to Mugen Ramen in a laneway yeah. uh, and also stop by Neko cards. I mean, hopefully these are going to help the problem because those are the only things I can do. You you call home and you say, I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you think, I don't know how much more ramen I can eat. That's right. But, you know, I'm willing to try another bowl just to see if that shakes it loose. Um, yeah. But it, it But the other thing that I can do when I am down there is attend PAX Australia. And uh, and so we are doing our best to simulate that experience for you today. Now, connected to this uh, is the Penny Arcade Q&A or the questioners down under. Now, this deck was provided for us by Laura Framwork. Um, and I am told that it includes pictures of Australian beasts. Now, obviously, when we did the Q and A at PAX West, there was a lot of adorable beasts, mm -hmm. um, beasts one could touch safely. A fun um, beast. Yeah, exactly. A friendly beast. There's a whole there's a whole Christmas carol about this. Um, but in this context, we will see if these are authentically Australian beasts. There may be some danger now. If you're watching this from some place that is not Australia, you may find, you know, tension and anxiety increasing. Down there, they don't give a shit. They just shake something like this out of their shoe. They're they're done. They're done being worried about it, right? Yeah, right? I see. I mean, I'm made nervous by this huge red rock. Like that's <laughs> even that's we're already in this no go <laughs> territory for me. <laughs> it's like, what does it represent? Yeah, that's not okay. You're just I confronted mean, with it. Come on. Yeah, I don't know if it I don't know if it represents well, I mean, we have to be open to the idea that it's some kind of mound uh within which rests uh technology from beyond our world. That's my first thought. Oh yeah, it's like a cocoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just if 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 this is actually if this has not hatched yet, uh Australian friends, please let us know how things are going with the cocoon. Uh, now, Mr. Strav, are you prepared, quite prepared uh, for our questions? I am. I have Let's all get... the answers. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'll, I'll simply handle the cue portion of the event. Anthony from Melbourne asks, have you ever taken normal mundane animals from real life and altered them to be creatures in tabletop games? If so, how would you modify a platypus? Honestly, a platypus is I, I feel like a platypus is exactly the sort of shit. It's kind that, of done. Well, I, I, there's no modification required. My understanding is that these weird spurs that they have on their, uh, like under their back feet, mm. hit you with a poison so bad. Oh, yeah. That you are driven mad and you need. Uh, you need chemicals or some kind of a surgery to disconnect the part of you that is conscious of pain. 
Ooh. This is already a D&D fucking monster. Look at this crazy ass bill. Look at this these is, weird ass fan hands. It's a classic technique. You just take two things and stick one part on the other and you get a monster. The other option yes. is to go dire with something. Yeah, that's always classic. So I mean, yeah. how do you so how do you how do you go up market with a uh, this uh, platypus here? Mr. Strauss. Jeez, I, I don't know. I feel like you make it, it's more dangerous if it's smaller. Like if it's dire, you <laughs> really know to get out of the way because <laughs> you see it. I'm worried about a small, like a garden sized one. You don't even know what happens. Yeah, all of a sudden you're just rolling around on the ground, driven mad by agony. I mean, I but, cut your but, leg off. Yeah, exactly. But there's still a scenario where you might see that small, you know, snail sized platypus. How about an aerosolized platypoid? <laughs> Uh, oh, man, you know something you could inhale, get stung a bunch. I, that's that's too much for me. I don't even know how you fight that. No, they take they they just take up, they just roost in there. I remember. So I have a substantial catalog of ancient and almost certainly deprecated Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Okay. And they put out a special expansion to the. They put out a special expansion to Ravenloft. It was like, you know, Beasts of the Domains or some shit. Monster mm -hmm. Manual Supplement. Back in those days, they put the Monster Manual Supplements out like and they were already three hole punched. So oh, you yeah, just, just like put it right in, in there. Ugh. But they were trying to suggest on one of these monsters. I, I feel like where shark sucks like yeah. i don't even i don't know how that got all the way through the process <laughs> honestly like that's just like the it's like the slush pile right of i don't know where any old thing and then what happens when it's the moon is it moon related i don't even know yeah <laughs> do they just in, in a bed and now they're a shark and they die it, it doesn't like it make it's so stupid yeah, it would And work. then it's like showing like it's like it, oh, these, you know, these weird limbs and then like the head is getting like progressively more sharky. It's just like I would just stand back 10 or 20 feet. He's yeah. not getting all the way over here. He could might be able to do that kind of that walrus worm move to get <sighs> at you. I I don't I feel Online. confident. I feel confident that this could be I feel like this could be evaded. It's like zombies. They're slow, but what if there's like a thousand? And that's and then it's more about the interpersonal conflict of the survivors. Yeah, but we also have to we also have to consider that it, it might have just been like this person's kink. Like it's just like they've been waiting. It's like nobody else is gonna do it. I gotta All take right, this. Let him have it. Uh, yeah, and it's like it's then he'll listen, stop. They're like, I don't know if it's a great monster, and everybody's just like, just listen. It's just let him have this just one where sharp the page. <laughs> Let him have this one where it's shark. yours. Exactly. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, French Onion Stewart um, from Stuart Little French Ooh. asks, tell us your favorite innocuous non-moment within a film that has become a beloved catchphrase in your household. Ooh, that's a tough one. Because it, it's not as common in this current household, of which I'm the, you know, the in the hierarchy at the top level yes but it, when i was a child there was plenty of them that my brother and i we had to like figure out what was it from and we couldn't decipher oh, you couldn't get but you, you couldn't like just you, like reverse engineer its provenance or something yeah it was like it just became this this song this 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 little atom of 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 noises that you make in a circumstance it's like it was it even from a movie i don't know I remember one was, uh, which is not a particularly good one, but it's the first one that came to mind. We watched, um, gosh, what was it called? I want to get it wrong. Was it Mysterious Island? Um, it's like a, uh, it's from the late 50s. as yeah. Ray Harryhausen, uh, um, uh, stop motion animation. It's like Captain Nemo, the sequel. He runs aground and he's got his own island where he's got a bunch of <laughs> beasts that he's made big. He's made beasts. them dire. Nice. Yeah. And uh, they were in a, they're trying to get off the island. And one of them is trying to figure out how to work the hot air balloon. And the other character says, I can whack it. That became, let me drive in our home. Get out of the way. 
<laughs> what? I can work it. That's it. I don't know. Who so knows why? Over over here, there is a um, there's a moment when Sokka in Avatar, Sokka is talking to Zuko, and they're just sort of comparing their troubles. And hmm. Sokka tells Zuko that his first girlfriend turned into the moon, which is literally true in the story. But just as a piece of conversation, you know, might there might still be some questions. And Zuko's response is, that's rough, buddy. Like, yeah, that's yeah. some relatable content oh, there. Yeah, that's perfect. I just so, thought of an even an even more be a better way you continue. But uh, no, I mean, basically, that's rough, buddy gets deployed <laughs> daily in this house. It says it all. Yeah, the one that does get used here, I just realized was from a, a, a Tim and Eric sketch where and our son will use it all the time. But just investigating something that's spoiled but the line is let me take a whiff <laughs> <laughs> it's so personable like it's not even a problem like i just want to check it out let me yeah. take a whiff just a little a little analysis a little assessment i'll handle mm. this i'll tank this scent <laughs> sad millennial from uh, sad millennial from pathetic millennial lifestyle. Now this is, oh. I can't stress this enough. This is not editorial content on our part. Uh, a, a sad millennial, uh, or I, I guess someone trying to shame that, that cadre type this fair. in. This is not, this is not in-house is what I'm is saying. Is there any other generation that's currently still alive other than millennials? I think it's been long enough. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're at the apex. There's yeah. only a few more, uh, gen xers to devour um and then they'll 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 be atop the the food pyramid uh i would love to know what TikTok audios or tropes have wormed their way into your common parlance for me a very specific way of saying good soup has become the norm i i so we were filming episodes of acquisitions incorporated the c team just yesterday and mm -hmm. i think that between ryan kate and tristan i think it was probably said 30 times in the space of a day like the just soup? the film good soup they said they said it over and over see i missed it i it's don't a, have enough uh enough talk talk enough buy-in on TikTok to th my concern is that by the time it gets to me if i say it it's done and i will reveal oh. my failure and it's like yet another you, you'll way see, it'll be a situation where stuff. like everyone is having fun everyone is enjoying themselves and then you come in with the deprecated meme yeah and the party like, is over yeah people just start gathering their coats and leaving yeah without a word and i know what i did no and just and shaking their head it. in an exhausted disappointed way god no i got nothing on this one it's a nightmare well I, the truth is i wouldn't even know where to start um there i have seen there there'd be no way for me to accurately represent how much TikTok i've seen in the last five years i was talking to it was, it was a while ago i was talking to ryan about it and ryan was like hey there's this new app it's like it's like Vine, but it's like also like musically, and then you're like making they vines. Can, they can be longer and taller. Yeah, and it's like that's basically what it is. That's and I was like, and the idea I think was that it was to be ironically um, dismissed, but mm. then I installed it and um, it began to dominate my central nervous system like a drug, and. I, 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 I like nothing more. It's like, I don't even go to any individual tags. I don't want any tags from TikTok. I don't want any focus. You just want to I, drink from that hose. I, exactly. I just want that high pressure pipe to just go. Um, I just want to scroll. And I want to optimal, you know, chain of events for me is like, I'm looking at uh, someone in India cutting a mango. And then we shift over and now this is a group of Russian men in some kind of a foundry using an in, like an industrial press to slam uh, a gigantic chunk of iron into this other thing. 
and then we move right down and then it's someone who you whose face you never see making a recipe in the woods yeah so what we're talking about is you know what terms have entered your vocabulary we should be talking about what techniques when you see some of this stuff that's potentially useful what if i need to split a thousand ton boulder and yeah, all i have it, are these spars and a, and a sledgehammer what do i do i know now what to do no now in terms of the, the adam driver good soup thing for sure i mean obviously right now i'm deeply deeply invested in what has been called couch boy discourse um uh, this took over yeah look it up this took over my yeah. for you page about a week ago and essentially it is the craziest thing it's like a combination of of like the typical like relationship woes and like i think our hunger for true crime or something so all it is what started as a video so she comes back she visits her boyfriend at college um unannounced uh -huh. And then there's someone filming behind her as she walks in and it looks like it looks sort of like he might have another girlfriend already, but she doesn't realize it. She doesn't realize it and posts the video in a celebratory way. I see. And he's like, oh, hello. Yes. When and so it's like and this. now they're zooming in on hands. They're like you can see very clearly where she is like handing him his phone like in secret behind him and then somebody is like they've taken a picture of the window opposite and they've done a bunch of contrast tricks to show that as they enter the room her head is on his shoulder like i am i could not be more invested but i would say That's that the, amazing the main thing i have done uh is i will i will any breakfast hack quote unquote that they deploy on there, I'm definitely doing it. I'll, I'll, I put like the eggs down in the bottom of the pan in a thin layer. And then as they begin to cook, I put the tortilla on top of that. Oh, come on. And now, now stop they're recording. bound. Do that now. No, no, see, they're, now, and now they are bound together. Now one merely flips, installs cheese, folds both sides over, flips again, slice and eat. It's an what incredible experience. What am I doing experience. with my life? Well, you're not eating this great breakfast hack that I saw on TikTok. I, I have probably made 12 recipes that it's it's uh, like you cut the chains off of my <laughs> arms, and my legs, and I'm free. Finally free. Cat parent from dog mom country asks, do you believe dog people and cat people are fundamentally different? Why is your choice better? I I refuse to believe this has not been exhaustively studied, actually. I, I th and plus, in your own home, I think you have both uh, specimens. We have, a bar we, we have a bipartite uh, yeah. home. Do you, do you have you had to divide the house into members of the family that are no. dog or cat? No, no. And, and I mean, I, I always had both growing up. I, 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 think that there, I think that such people do exist, but I, I think that... Um, I think that there are also lots of people that just want to rub an animal in an errant way, you know? Oh, yeah. This is very much my dad, who my uh, I grew up in a house where my mom has, has been told is from Egypt. And apparently over there, uh, a dog or a cat is treated as a stray animal that you do not let into your home. Well, hold on, hold on. you mean either, either configuration, either one of these beasts, these are just like wild animals? Like they're not considered like friends? a rat. Yeah, it's like having a something come in your house like this is vermin. And when we visited, I understood this. I'm like, wow, it's just they have a, like a dog society in the alleys there. That it's like, okay, well, I understand if this is what you grew up with. I, yeah, I wouldn't want a dog either. But uh, my dad very much just wants to pet an object. I mm -hmm. think for his purposes, a cat would have been ideal just because uh, he's a dog person for yeah. sure, but he doesn't hate cats. Yeah. But a cat will stay because of the warmth and then you have something to do with your hand yes and that, obviously that's obviously i'm pro that um but I, I was in uh ireland this was like a million years ago like well not a million but like more than 20. and yeah. uh they were talking about I, I was on a farm and i had a chance to see this like sheepdog like cut a flock like it was one of the craziest things i've ever seen oh. in my life 
amazing that they, they don't can bark. Do they just fucking know how to do it. Like what the hell? And so, you know, he's running around, he's doing shit. And I was like, I was like, cause here a farm cat is not necessarily uh, crazy, right? It's possible yeah. to have a farm cat. Certainly if you have a barn, having yeah. a cat to manage that, you know, as, you know, as a regional manager for that it may venue. Not even be, it may not even be a cat you own. It's just a cat you're cool with that does yeah. live in there. It's a contractor. Yeah. And obviously it's present because of the mice, you know, it wants to get a yeah. hold of the mice. But this, this Irish man went off like for five solid minutes on how malevolent and vile he thought cats were. Oh. And so it's like, maybe if you have sheep and it's not like a typical barn situation, you don't, <laughs> you just don't have, it's just like, these are selfish animals. No, they, don't, no. they don't love anybody. They don't care about anybody. Yeah, and I was two, like, Jesus Christ. Okay. They're all, both describing the elephant. It's like, I only <laughs> have barns and dogs are trash and uh, <laughs> cats are the best. I've never seen a sheep. Why would cat. you even need that? <laughs> Disgusting animals. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere, dogs and cats are there, and then the sheep are the invader. <laughs> yeah, I have a zoo, but it doesn't I have got, any I sheep. Got, it's just cats and dogs. I got too many of these things. Uh, Yip Harburg from somewhere over the rainbow asks, in ten words or less, without using the name of the food itself. Explain the taste of your favorite dessert. Well, that's a tough one. Yeah. Although I know I know the dessert, and I don't think there's no complexity here. It's just it's cold. Yeah, I said this. I was just gonna say it's like it's like um, uh, vanilla. <laughs> that's not that's but, an adjective in this case. It's not oh, a, I, I, a word. Oh. Yeah, without using the name of the food itself, but I mean, okay. I, I still, and then it's also cold and creamy. And that, I think that, I think you're most I of the see. way there. We need a, like a taboo situation. You have to have like a buzzer. You have to have someone like waiting. I don't know if you have this, Australia. I don't know if you have the game taboo. Maybe you- Buzzers there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure you have buzzers. I feel like that's-, that's You a, can just have somebody at the party going, eh. That's but a that human, also, that's a human well, universal. Well, the fact is sometimes the batteries run out in the buzzer and somebody just has to go, meh, meh. Oh, I used to love those ones because you'd push the button and it would go, ah, like it would oh, make yeah. it not the right sound. <laughs> like the connection. There's it doesn't, no authority. No, that. it doesn't inspire. So what we're talking about is cold, smooth tastes. And I'll uh, eat as much of it as there is in a freezer. There's and no. You have, to not, you have to keep it away from me. It's an, uh, my capacity for this product is heroic. Let's put it that it's, way. It's like an anti-stomach yeah. <laughs> container that it's in. I has to be emptied by me. Mm. I'm not eating to my fullness. I'm eating to the opposite. Exactly. Now, Jeff Raven from Horsetown. I swear to God, I did not put this title in here from the chat, the discord, PA, Patreon, $5 or $10. Uh, a month well, or, or one uh, join today asks i understand that this pax is virtual however you have been down to the amazing incredible australia in years past mm -hmm. did the toilets indeed swirl anti-clockwise when you flushed inquiring american minds want to know so crasp it looks like your coriolis effect has uh, come full circle if you will but what direction did it come full circle in? That's that's the question, actually. I don't know. And honestly, I think that the secret here for uh, Jeff's purposes is to look at what a hurricane does, right? That's observable. I've never seen a toilet do that. But I'll tell you what, I do not really pay attention to which way the water is going here. Uh, and you got problems with like asymmetries in the bowl. You know, yeah. there's all these other factors that you cannot take out. I mean, it might as well just go straight down. It's just you cannot reproduce it at that level. We yeah. need a guided study, double blind, banks of toilets being flushed round the clock. And at the same time, they're generating Bitcoins because <laughs> I've also connected that to those in secret. So it's not a good experiment. It's a flawed and it is unethical. 
But those are my coins. <laughs> it's deeply wrong, um, but I'm definitely going to continue doing it. Nobody said no, so I will it's, just keep collecting. It's very wrong, but I have a substantial capacity to be enriched by it. And so that's, I mean, that's kind of thumbing the scale a little bit for me. I, I think we just play it out. I just think <laughs> we see what happens. Uh, no, I, the issue, Jeff Raven uh, from uh, America, the issue that you'll find when you go to Australia, I mean, what, you can look at the toilet, you can, you know, observe your waste you know, on your own time. I, that's, you know, and you're going to do that once and then just be like, will you go home? Like, that can't be your reason for going down, right? But no, uh, no, uh, the I have a much more harrowing. <laughs> I have a much more harrowing uh, bathroom in piece of information for you and you would do well to heat it. Um, okay. So sometimes you have a trough style urinal. What you might call a collaborative urinal where everyone is sort of dispensing for lack of a better term. It's, it's like a we work for piss. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. And the, the metaphor is already there and the pun is built in. So the branding is, is exquisite already. Um, it's immaculate, but you know, so we have these sometimes, especially like in older bathrooms, but there is a type of bathroom, at least that I have seen in Australia, that's quite common. And it is a combination of like a wide trough style, you know, built into the wall urinal, mm -hmm. but you're intended to step up sort of into it. And there is a great, I mean, you recall this instrument, right? Oh there, yeah. There is a great that you stand on sort of like over it. And, but I didn't know this at first. And so I, I thought that it was like a regular urinal. And so I was peeing on the part that you're supposed to stand on. Oh, and I was looked upon. I was looked upon with terror, <laughs> with rage. Um, you know why I I need the benefit of making the whole bottom half of a room the toilet. Tell me why that was better than just doing a regular trough that where yeah you do stand back you don't have to get inside of it. Well, yeah, you don't have to become in. Listen, I'm not. Listen, I'm not. It's a perfectly. It's however you want to do it. All I'm saying is, is basically, it was. He looked at me as though I were peeing actively on his feet, which I mean, in a way, he was not wrong. Yeah, but does he think what he thinks the great pristine, and you're the only one who sullied it? No, friend. I th I think that there was probably no great at all. I think the entire yeah. thing is just calcified urine. Um, and you've, it, you've, just, it just kind of grows in this fractal like exactly. the bond angles are just right that, yeah it's all crystals. 90 degree <laughs> oh, here here now crasp uh, do you want to read this one oh yes i can enjoy the next i enjoy. have it ah grover cincinnati from putten bay is that a uh is that an actual uh a construct or is this a, a comical uh is this a real australian place Anybody can submit these is my understanding. Apparently nice. America can do it. Uh, to save your counterpart's life, you have to choose a tattoo for them. It can go anywhere and be of anything, but cannot be any smaller than a 10 in square inches. Jeez, that's massive. Uh, yeah. They are unconscious, dying of being untattooed. Nobody else can make this decision but you. What do you each have tattooed on the other's bottom where? Nice. Time is running out. So I'm going to assume nice. I'm going to let me embellish this a little yeah. bit. There is this is a um, it has to be administered. The antidote to the poison that we've ingested has it's to be ink based. It's ink. It's under the skin. It's subdermal. And that's where the antidote has to be delivered because that's where mm -hmm. the poison will be nullified. Well, it also um, has to remain there for a time to continue to do its healing work. Right. And as a means of making a little cash on the side, the doctor has loaded it into a tattoo uh, needle and absolutely he's always trying to keep things. a hand in you know yeah you can you can it's not going to diminish the antidote any so make put some black inks whatever you want my first thought is i don't know you have tattoos i do not but yeah. i don't know what your taste is what your style is so my thought was oh, what well, if i, I can i can give decision, you some, yeah i mean I, here but oh, you make it uv ink and then it's just oh. a night a cool surprise yeah, yeah honestly that would be cool and it's like you're at a you're at a um 
a music festival and they're checking the stamp and then it just continues to go up the arm. Yeah, that would, that would be. Listen, I don't hate that at all. I think that's that would scary. kick ass. But what is the what is the iconography? That's a good question. Um, let's see. For you, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. you had a lot of. That's a lot of. That's a big column width to fill. I might. Uh, that's rude. Yeah, opt op to. <laughs> No, it's been defined. That's her content. Do with your, well, with your <laughs> stature, uh, it, it would have to be some text. <clears throat> I, I've always wanted to do like a to show. Do you remember the old episode of the uh, Batman the animated series where, fundamentally, or the at the base of it, Bruce Wayne is like, I guess I was never Batman, and then he realizes he's dreaming because I guess Scarecrow put him to sleep to think he has the perfect life, and he figured it out because he couldn't read anything in the dream. He opened books and it just was nonsense. I see. Uh, I would love to what have a, great a paragraph of text that just descends into less and less recognizable, but analogous to English, to Roman characters. Have you ever read Annihilation? I've not read it, but I've, we talked briefly about it. I haven't read it. I've seen the movie. It's, liked it. It's Apparently worth the book's it. much better. The yeah. book is, well, yes, oh, but it would also be much better for you. But there mm. is a piece of sort of mimetic, um, perpetual text that's always rising up in mm. the in the forms of the of the book. And that would be a really cool thing to have in a hidden place in a oh, hidden yeah. way uh, oh, for yeah. for my friend Chris um, between the shoulder blades. Uh, on the back, uh, I would have the sign of the Ur, mm. which is uh, connected to the uh, long-running game Acquisitions Incorporated, the C team, coming up on almost five years now. Um, it is sort of the icon of um, his character's drive, basically. And we've sort of embroidered parts of it together. Like the basic concept is Chris's, but he left enough space around it for me to play with. And um, also he designed the the sigil of it as well. So I think that uh, would, it, it would, that would be welcome. It would, I think, I think, it, I think cool. it, would right. I it would look right. I think it would look right. But 10 inches is real big too. It's a that lot of just... ur. It's a, <laughs> it's a whole yeah. lot of ur. <laughs> Uh, Horace Horsecaller from the Talkies asks, modifier, uh, answer the next question as though you were narrating a, a Pathé newsreel? I think I know. I think I know what I, I'm talking listen, about here. Listen, okay, so you're going to have to handle it. This is just more business. Now the question is, is the next one like, gonna help us. designed for this or is it a a genuine question is like my mother died it's like i don't want to answer oh, yeah now it's oh, weird boys? now Come you're on. making me do weird stuff here All so right. i will uh, i'm going to project us into the future you can handle the question and then uh feast uh upon the uh the product let me see if i can remember like because it's it depends on what's being asked because like the newsreels i know are a little bit jaunty but they also but the pathway newsreels could have been like a more stern delivery I ain't go with jaunty. That's the that's the devil yeah, I know. The bounce, juxtaposable from New Jersey, which is definitely in Australia. Asks in order to better simulate an authentic in-person PAX Australia, we will be releasing a wide variety of deadly Australian fauna into the rooms with you. Which of you will be the first to succumb to the chittering hordes? Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, well, they got, <laughs> is I, it platypi? Yeah, exactly. Is it aerosolized platypi? Because that's the that's the end game, I think. Because there are people in the chat now saying those are real. Like you're making jokes, but they're real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's actually it's not funny and it's weird that you like persist in this. Yeah, um, that's how they. It's like in the spring, it's not pollen, but that's how they <laughs> procreate. It's just platypoids. Clouds of yeah. Um, uh, gosh, well, I feel like. I, I feel like there is probably less Chris in aggregate to eat. I mean, that's the only the only thing I, I think it's just like we're we're burning two candles of different sizes, but one has larger volume, right? I mean, that's my oh, feeling. My this, feeling this is, is normalized. That, yeah. 
No, I, I think that that's what's going to come. But also, you're jacked now. Who knows? Sometimes, sometimes when we're, I look over and I'll be like, what the fuck? What's, did he make some kind of crossroads deal with no. Satan? Like, what's I going on? A, I have a series of boils under my skin that are in the position of where muscles could be. And it just <sighs> accentuates. It just, it's a falsehood. It's a lie. What a great uh, comfort that must be for you. You know what? Once they, they're like, I'm going to tuck into this muscle. Can't wait to eat some of this. And then they're going to get into the boil. And they're going to go, ah. Well, and the, 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 other high, guy. the high pressure <laughs> of the fluid escape. It's we a can't personal miss. defense system. Nice. It's a, a PDS, uh, for lack of a better term. Tepid well water from X-Ray Living Magazine asks, name a mashup that would be as much of a barn burner as Martin Crane telling Frazier that he has to pilot the uh, Eva or Niles will have to do it again. That is, I mean, that, that's a pretty, uh, that's a... Uh, it's sick. It's a so mind-sundering sweet. combination. This is like, this feels like going into, uh, you know, meet with a, a brand or a corporation and they say, do a, make us a meme that's viral. Can you do that? Make, yeah. What we really need is a viral We are looking meme. for virality. And the more, the better. I don't think we're, we're looking for more viral. If, you catch what <laughs> I I'm mean, saying. if that's, if that's possible it's, for our dollar, like, come on. Don't, I think you combine skip. the great British baking show and the squid game. See the, the squid game I know is, is a hot property right now, but I this don't is know what I'm saying. It. Well, uh, it's essentially, uh, the idea is imagine, um, uh, like a battle royale type situation plus uh, competitive children's games. That's scary. It is scary. I do but like then, the costumes very much. But then imagine that you are that they are also on some kind of baking show where they need to incorporate previous contestants. Ah. And when a contestant leaves, they are they are simply an ingredient. So they never really leave the show. Yeah, you either you win the game or you be the game. Is that a good net slogan for We're like this? Food? Is that does that seem smooth? I don't. Is it viral? Okay, can we? Okay, get a ruling. All right, it's we'd, viral. Hey, we'd we'd like more viral. Oh God, what the ah ah! I don't want this that should have here. a warning. I'm sorry, I no, it should like I I, I want a warning before. Ugh, but, God, I want a warning before I get the warning for the other thing that I'm going to be warned in this way. I can see a palp. This should be, yeah, that Ugh. should be the background for the actual envelope. Uh, oh, it is a good question, though. Yeah, uh, well, and, and, and there's, there's a few different angles, but let me go ahead and read it. Okay. Um, Harry Asbury from Perth, WA, asks, uh, for both Jerry and Chris, what is the best way to help people with a disability to get them into Dungeons and Dragons? And I think, mm -hmm. I think that it really matters, you know, what needs to be scaffolded um, so that a person feels welcomed and invited. And, you know, there, there's a, in a couple specific cases, um, I did an interview uh, with some really, really cool people. Let me, let me look up uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, I, 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 I spoke to them at yeah. length. Uh, I wonder if about we're their braille about dice. The same. Pre oh no, this is different. Then that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, you can make these on Shapeways. This is one good example. Yeah. Um, so you can purchase various types of dice, but the Dots RPG project um, uh, is a nonprofit whose purpose is to make this sort of thing is to try to trivialize access to this stuff. Yeah. Um, and it is really, really neat. And so they had gone into, you know, with me, how D and D beyond is really the preferred venue, mm. uh, for the blind to access the game because they can attach different kinds of metadata to the images. So they get wow. access to all of the text 
in you know in the in the in the ways that they expect to be able to use text but they actually there's this extra band of information um that is on the in the description side so mm. I mean, that's 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 the one that i have done the most research on is I... that specific angle but even tools like roll 20 uh, roll 20 could be a, a really nice sort of switzerland middle ground for many different people um, yeah. to come together in the same space See. and because it's it's in a browser they get access to um a lot of the a lot of the the tools that they're used to using um to access this stuff you're referring to a lot the like the mechanical concerns of being able to play yeah and i took the question from a like a social concern Perfect. Of, of being uh welcomed or like if any consideration would have to be made in in these spaces and i was going to bring up um the on twitter they are um uh mustangs art but they developed the um the combat wheelchair rules ah uh, yes yes that was that was a big hit um and yeah. it's seen it it's seen integration um, God, was it in Strixhaven? I, I, I feel like I've seen like official integration I, of that stuff. I think there was, yeah, some some version of it, right? But it's yeah. a, and I, the only thing I know about that is like the discourse around it, where there's of course, of course, a, a cadre of people that are like, why would you need one? Because magic will, you could walk, and then you don't need it. It's like, well, but I have one, and can I not? use it right. in the game as part of my character why would i not have one you telling me they don't have a chair that has wheels on it then you could do something with that you're yeah. saying that that's too fantastical <laughs> for this game and i would want to tell my players like you can make what you want to and we'll make it function the way that you want to it's yeah. not there's nothing in here the point is that you should you're here and we're going to play together not i'm yes. sorry but you have to be an elf Mm. Everyone has to be an elf. No, yeah, and I yeah. and I think you know, and the the truth is, is that I think that um, obviously, you know, Harry Asbury is talking about this in a very specific context, mm -hmm. but all games of this kind really should invite. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what I would say is that this is just I would just enunciate this broadly that we. This is our heritage. These games are our traditions and our heritage. And it is absolutely vital that everybody uh, feel like they can sit down there and um, access that shared space, which frankly, I think we need more than ever. Yeah. Uh, Maybrick the Embroiler uh, <laughs> from Paradventure asks, what is the best digit? either number or finger hmm well i mean for finger i gotta hand it to the thumb i mean it did a lot of work for us it's a workhorse a species. <laughs> yeah you'd think we would have developed too like it's doing all the leverage here you know what i mean have you ever seen a um have you ever seen a koala's hand no not Dude, myself uh, here, here so I've australia dreamed. australia one moment just hang on a second, Chris. It's worth it. Just grab your phone real quick, pull up. Go to koala's uh, hands. Koala hands, um, erotica, and then don't, don't, don't you need the last part. Oh, <laughs> just, I didn't even oh, type it. The the forefinger has migrated to be a thumb. This is what I'm saying. Like, so this is a this is a good design in a very specific context. I'm just yeah. saying that you know you've you have you have submitted it, and uh, these strange uh, these strange creatures have beaten you to it. Wow! And not only that, not only the hand has an extra thumb, but the foot, the forefinger has merged with the middle finger, and they and they didn't need it. They're done with it. I, I can't be, I can't believe I know that you love a cryptid. I can't believe that you didn't know about this real creature. I just didn't know. I'm this. I learned something great today. Well, that's as far as that's fingers. What do we like for numbers? We like for a number? Numbers. We talk about an integer. It's just a single digit. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, they're all great. 
they're all supreme. I have no, always wait, had no. a I have always had a soft spot for seven though. I'll tell you that. I was gonna say seven as well, but I realize now the right answer is zero because a lot of higher math is very important. You need that zero. So everybody who developed the zero first in their cultures, it was like the Mayans, I think. But when they had it, they they got something special. You gotta be able to represent nothing. Right? Yeah. yeah, right? That's the best digit for me. Oh man. It's like <laughs> we're getting into uh, like number lines and negative integers and stuff with Ronya, uh, my youngest daughter. And it's like, I mean, I remember learning these concepts at the beginning and now they're so, I mean, now they're obvious and universal, Yeah. but it's like I when mean, you're first talking about it, you're like, so wait, so you're saying that it's a lower negative. So more <laughs> negative is a bigger to less, right. it's a bigger, small than mm -hmm. the, it takes a fucking minute. <laughs> It's it, smaller. It, it takes you a second to get it. I always uh, was describing those as a debt. It's like, if, yes, if you take seven from 10 or if you take 10 from seven, it's negative three because you owe, I still got to get my three. Exactly. You but still turkey. zero doing work for us right here. Um, Orem Facinato uh, from Geronimo asks modifier <laughs> answer the next question in a fancy old lady voice yeah chris can i prevail upon you i'll do it i'll do it again if you, i uh, feel like these are for me somehow i love I it. do like this picture though a little gentle water bug on a snail yeah it's public transportation i'm not scared of that okay. no no I, I support both of these creatures uh, uh fancy grandma's lady. yeah yeah you, you want to here I'll, I'll handle the this and then you can answer it as this elderly oh, okay. imaginary woman uh grandma stir flash uh, from DMC asks, just learned that along with Carsonization, oh boy, oh boy, this is something I discuss very often at my house. Oh yes, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. There is an obsession uh, with Carsonization at my house, which is basically the independent and many centuries taking process of species turning into crabs. Crabs, it turns out, is just a great design, and it's not locked down by IP. Um, it's available to a lot of different creatures. There is a parallel process called mustelification. Really? According to literally one thread on Twitter, which is the process by which some <laughs> animals turn into weasels or weasel-like shapes. I'll be the judge of this. Here, assuming this is real and not just literally one thread on Twitter, what would hmm. you prefer, weasel or crab? This trash can. I'm looking it up and I can't find a goddamn thing about it. I'm going to answer as the old lady would answer here, yeah. which is, oh, how dare you? You made me go to my grandson's computer and look up something and you know how slow I type and it, and it wasn't there. And now my arthritis is acting up and I have to lie down. And you've killed me. You killed me with your lie. No, the no, end. No, 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 but separate though. I mean, if if we have a choice between Weasler crab, oh, I mean, how do we uh, feel about it? I gotta go crab. Like if, I gotta go crab. I, Look at a terrestrial live, crab, like a like a robber crab or a, a like a coconut crab, right? Yeah, there's it's like so crabs many are not they're crabs. not limited. Yeah, I like. I mean, on land, being long and being able to sneak into a spot, very valuable. I get that. Yeah. Which, which you're missing it you gain that the 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 movement the agility but you lack the armor and i'd rather hunch down get my weird those components that make up the mouse i don't yeah. even know what that is it's like get them moving the food to a small hand that puts it into a, i don't know what that is the cavity yeah. but that's where i want to be yeah i would love just 100 percent love absolutely love end to end demand desire would please like to crack a whole coconut inside my sharp scissor hand. Oh, what like a treat. nothing. Like nothing. Pachow. And then just get in there and just oh, and, get, get, and get my yours. lickens. Get my that's lickens. Yours. Oh, yeah. Who the fuck is going to take it at this point? I'll do the same thing to their femur. Ah! Mm. Yeah, they're a good thing they're not called the femur crap. Because yes. they could be. That's true. That's true. Uh, well, Crasp 
if you can believe it. Um, I think that we have reached the end uh, of our Q&A experience here to kick off PAX Australia. I have enjoyed it a lot. A delight. Um, I know, I know. I miss Australia very badly, and I fantasize constantly um, about when, uh, about a world where I can return there and bring my family and show them all of the cool uh, Melbourneisms that I have discovered um, in their absence. So until next time, thank you so much.